for GPU. Uh, it uh, consists of uh, 12 uh, NVIDIA uh, V100 equipped uh, servers. Uh, in all cases, uh, our systems are equipped with uh, InfiniBand uh, interconnection. Uh, here you see specifically the Avituho supercomputer from the front and uh, from the backside. Uh, it's a, a system with uh, 150 servers uh, for computations equipped uh, with a non-walking InfiniBand interconnection. And also we have some management and storage uh, servers. Uh, about our system with uh, a GPU uh, NVIDIA Tesla V100 uh, uh, GPU cards, uh, it consists of uh, 12 uh, servers uh, from Fujitsu Primergy uh, with uh, 128 uh, gigabyte RAM for each uh, server, dual CPU, uh, 25 cores. Uh, they have SSDs and uh, some hard disk uh, drives, and uh, they are equipped uh, with uh, InfiniBand. Uh, uh, and uh, here, the big data uh, system, it has uh, uh, for computing eight servers, which uh, have this uh, three terabyte RAM for each of the system. And uh, they are with uh, four CPUs each. Uh, so each of these uh, CPUs has 22 cores in total, 88 cores per server, three terabyte of RAM per server, and uh, uh, 32 terabyte of SSDs uh, for each uh, server, uh, Mellanox InfiniBand HDR at uh, 200 gigabit. Uh, per second is the interconnection here. Uh, and uh, this uh, system of eight servers, they are connected to with uh, uh, the other uh, data servers, uh, uh, as you see here. So these uh, servers provide a Wooster file system uh, to all the others. Uh, so they are not uh, accessible for computing, only providing storage. Uh, but uh, in total, we have uh, more than five uh, petabyte of storage, as you see here. This is provided from the disk uh, enclosures, where each enclosure provides a total of uh, 1.6 uh, petabytes of uh, disk uh, storage. And uh, we have also SSDs, uh, quite a lot of uh, fast uh, SSD storage here. Uh, but as I said, uh, uh, my talk will be uh, more concentrated on using the Avituho uh, system. Uh, here you see uh, the peak performance uh, from CPUs. In total, 50 teraflops uh, comes from the CPU. Uh, also, we have uh, peak performance from the accelerators, which are Intel Xeon Phi, uh, 362 teraflops in total. So we get a total peak performance of more than 400 teraflops. And uh, we have the real measured performance achieved uh, using the LIMPAC uh, benchmark, uh, as uh, the system is uh, visible in top 500. This was uh, 264 teraflops in total. The max uh, power usage uh, is uh, approximately uh, 250 kilowatts. Uh, what we have observed during the LIMPAC test was something around uh, 200 kilowatts, uh, probably a little bit more than that. Uh, in normal operation, we reach uh, something around uh, 100 kilowatts, uh, probably because the applications usually do not stress that much the system. Uh, here you see uh, more detailed uh, hardware uh, features uh, of the system. 150 servers, uh, almost identical, with a dual CPU of uh, this type, Intel Xeon E5, uh, eight cores uh, each. Hyper trading is enabled. You can use it uh, if you gain something from it. Our experience uh, was that uh, most applications gain from using hyper-threading, even a little, 
from 15 to in ice applications like limpac uh, do not gain from hypertraining. Uh, for the RAM, we have 64 gigabyte uh, per not uh, for the CPU accessible RAM. From the coprocessors, we have uh, in total 300 uh, coprocessors in the Xeon Pi uh, 7120 uh, p uh, Each of these coprocessors has uh, 61 physical cores, uh, but uh, uh, the hyperthreading there is uh, 4x. So in total, we get up to 254 uh, threads, uh, logical cores on the coprocessors. Uh, so here you see some summary about the total cores on CPUs with hyper threading and uh, also uh, from the uh, accelerators and from accelerators with hyper threading now we reach quite large number when we use uh, the uh, accelerators with hyper threading enabled and uh, our experience has shown that uh, 4x is maybe too much because the memory is uh, 16 gigabyte uh, for each of the um, coprocessors uh, so uh, one should be careful not to exceed uh, uh, this amount uh, because uh, this can lead to a crash of the uh, accelerator and uh, even restart of the whole server. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, we have quite a high number of uh, threads and uh, it, in most cases it is uh, usable and advisable to use uh, uh, maybe 120, 122 threads uh, per uh, accelerator. The total amount of RAM, as you see, is combination from CPUs and uh, accelerators. Uh, we have uh, a bit limited disk storage in this system, but uh, as you noticed, uh, the other system has a petabyte, so it's not a problem to uh, use uh, that uh, storage for uh, storing files, uh, backup, and so on. Uh, the interconnection is non blocking. Uh, it means that uh, the communication between any two servers uh, is not affected uh, adversely from communication for, of some other servers, let's say. Uh, the latency is uh, around 1.1 microseconds between any two uh, servers in this system. And this is the bandwidth. This is line speed uh, from the interconnection. Uh, so here I provide uh, for those of you that are interested to use this system, uh, which uh, is uh, free for researchers, uh, especially Bulgarian researchers. Uh, so you can uh, go to this address and see uh, our uh, policies uh, and uh, uh, the forms which uh, need to be filled and uh, provided in order to get access uh, to the system. Uh, and uh, uh, here some idea about the software environment. Uh, so it's uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The uh, execution is governed uh, via a scheduler, a batch scheduler. So uh, it is uh, assumed that uh, your jobs are submitted uh, in the queue. And uh, uh, here you see some non-exhaustive list of uh, the software that is available uh, on this system. Uh, the open source software is installed uh, under opt uh, exp software. Uh, we also have uh, Intel Cluster Studio for development, uh, and uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, acquiring some new uh, software that uh, may be quite useful uh, in the future. So uh, this was uh, my brief uh, presentation of uh, uh, our systems and uh, their uh, features from, let's say, the outside, let's say. And uh, uh, usually one, uh, when somebody 
obtains access to this system, uh, then uh, one can see what exactly is installed, uh, one can check, uh, and so on. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, how this uh, can be done. So I will stop this sharing and uh, I will start another uh, sharing. So I will share this screen now. So uh, of course the system is running Linux. So the access uh, happened uh, uh, through some uh, SH uh, client. Uh, uh, it can be accessed uh, from anywhere. Uh, and uh, once you get uh, inside the system, then it's advisable to go to this uh, op soft directory. And you can see what kind of uh, software. I hope you've seen my screen. You can see what kind of uh, software, what versions and so on are uh, available. Uh, and uh, uh, here we have some directory documentation, which uh, may be useful for you. Uh, here we have uh, some uh, uh, tarballs from previous uh, trainings where you can see uh, examples. Uh, and uh, in the documents directory, you can see this uh, Avitoho best practice guide. This guide uh, was actually prepared for uh, praise, some previous version of uh, uh, the praise uh, projects. And uh, uh, this uh, guide is quite uh, exhaustive about uh, how to use the system, how to uh, develop uh, or how to run existing uh, codes uh, in more or less optimal way. Uh, so uh, I uh, think that uh, this guide uh, is uh, very useful for anybody that uh, just starts to use uh, the system to see how exactly to submit jobs. Uh, uh, and uh, I will. I, I am oh. sorry to interrupt you, Itanela. Uh, just there is some uh, writing in the chat from the participants that they cannot see. Is it possible to increase the font size a little bit? Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. I will Thank try you. to increase the font here. Uh, I didn't notice this. Uh, I will try to increase the font uh, of this screen. Mm. Uh -huh. Only here. Uh, is it better now? Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay, as you can see, this is the directory where this guide is uh, located. And uh, uh, here you can see uh, what kind of uh, software is installed uh, uh, of type uh, open source software. Uh, also, the, there is the Intel uh, compiler available in op Intel. Many different versions are installed and uh, we always try to upgrade to buy uh, the new versions and uh, 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 they uh, can uh, be used. Uh, so uh, regardless of uh, what is available in the guide, uh, I will try to give you some idea how to uh, make use of the system. So uh, I copied here some, uh, some examples that uh, uh, we can use. Uh, what I uh, usually do when I do some testing and uh, development. Uh, so I prepare some 
script, which uh, uh, just uh, does some sleep uh, here. So I can try to submit it now. Uh, it goes to this uh, big climate uh, uh, queue because uh, when I was uh, dealing with this script, I was using this queue. But for you, uh, it will be some queue related to computational chemistry and vector dynamics or something like this. So the, um, the queue is uh, something that uh, you will obtain information which queue to use uh, after your form is uh, approved. Uh, but uh, here you see that we request uh, four nodes. And uh, we say uh, how many cores from these nodes. Uh, it's advisable to uh, only use. Uh, Emmanuel, excuse me, please, but uh, people are asking if possible to increase even a bit more. Okay. Uh, uh, to me, it's also a bit difficult to, to, to see what's uh, on the screen. My, my screen is very big. Yeah. That's why I see it. Uh, Maybe too well. Let's try even more like this. Is it better now? Uh, this is much better. Uh, okay, okay. So let's stay with this. Uh, this is I, this is okay. Uh, so uh, here. Uh, Thank you. The, the most uh, no problem. Uh, the most important thing is always to use full nodes. So uh, although it is possible to use partial nodes and to define that you are going to use just one CPU, one CPU core and so on, but this leads to sharing of nodes uh, between different users, which is uh, very problematic. And uh, uh, it's, uh, if, if a, a job uh, is not going to use more than, let's say three cores, uh, this is maybe not a job for the supercomputer actually. This is a job that should be run somewhere else. So uh, even if you are going to use less than uh, the maximum number of uh, uh, cores, uh, please always request full nodes. And uh, uh, for real uh, uh, high performance usage, we expect that the people will, will use uh, many nodes, even far more than four nodes. Uh, our system has 150, so it is difficult to obtain the whole system for yourself, 150 nodes. This is quite uh, uh, rare to achieve a uh, uh, situation where you can really use these 150 servers. But uh, let's say using half the system, 64 nodes, uh, this is quite normal. and. Uh, 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 one can expect that such a job will pass and uh, will uh, finish at some reasonable time. Uh, of course, uh, in some cases, there are problems because people run uh, very long jobs and then such a long job uh, takes all the uh, servers uh, uh, for it uh, for a long time. And so they cannot be used for uh, jobs from other people. But uh, uh, in any case, uh, 32, 64 uh, servers should be possible to be used, but always use all the uh, cores in the servers. So request uh, here PPN 16 means uh, take all the cores from these nodes. And uh, uh, once the job starts running, you can see here what is happening. Uh, lots of jobs are running. I can see my own job uh, here. Uh, so I run here three jobs. Uh, this is the last one. If I want to get more detailed uh, information about this job, I can do it in this way. So I can see here where this job is being run. There is this uh, situation that we are trying to prevent people from logging into nodes that are used by other people. So uh, if, uh, for example, I see that uh, somebody is using uh, uh, server uh, 108, uh, if I try to go into this server with SSH, this should not work. Uh, although 
if I try to go to some of these servers that I am using, like this one, this should work. As you see, uh, I was able to uh, go there. And if you are running, uh, because the job is just a SH script. So if you are running something meaningful inside this uh, script, then uh, you would be able to see what exactly is happening with your job. You can do things like top and uh, h top. Uh, maybe h top is more interesting, uh, shows a more powerful and useful uh, output. But uh, because the script was uh, empty, uh, we do not see here some what. However, my idea was to demonstrate uh, some uh, actual usage. So I prepared here something uh, that is uh, maybe uh, useful for uh, users from your domain. Uh, for example, here uh, in this script, we have uh, uh, how to run uh, Gromax. So uh, we have uh, uh, Gromax installed somewhere. We can see here from this uh, operator. So in order to make sure we can use this uh, executable that has been compiled, we should uh, uh, put into the path uh, the libraries from certain GC version and uh, also from Intel compiler. And uh, uh, then we should uh, do this. Uh, so we are going to have in the path uh, GMX MPI. Okay. And uh, uh, if you are preparing a job script that will actually do uh, the running for you, uh, you have uh, here, this is just the name that you assign to this uh, script, how many nodes this script was for two nodes. Uh, wall time, this is not required, uh, but uh, the queue that we are using, like this queue, uh, it has a larger, uh, it allows uh, jobs that run for more time. So if you specify 24 hours, uh, this uh, simplifies the work of the bar system to prioritize uh, jobs and uh, also enables us to see that your job is going to finish uh, faster than the maximum for the queue. Uh, so if you, if you know in advance that your job is going to finish in 24 hours, then you can specify something like that. Uh, you can specify some, uh, it's advisable to specify more. So if you expect it to run uh, exactly 24 hours, specify something more than that, uh, to be sure. Uh, so here we have some tricks related to uh, how to obtain from inside the job to see where the job is running, and then to mm, prepare a notes file, actually, uh, a list of the notes that are uh, in the job. Uh, here I did already this, uh, so I have uh, in this file hosts, uh, the list of hosts where uh, one of these jobs that I submitted is running. So once you have this list, you can use it uh, inside the script or uh, as now we are going to do outside of the script. So here you can see some line that was uh, considered to be useful to run. Uh, Gromax uh, inside this job. However, I'm going to modify this line. So I will run this. I will first log on to one of these servers. Go to this directory. As you see here in the script, it's important to switch to the directory from where the job was submitted. Otherwise, uh, uh, it will start from the uh, home directory, and this is not a very good idea. 
because uh, your data is not there. So uh, you should have uh, some operator to switch to the correct uh, directory. So once we are inside, uh, we are going to create some useful line to start uh, this uh, Gromax. However, I think I, uh, I, I don't have now this active, so I will repeat them. So I load what needs to be loaded. And now presumably I have access to this executable. So I can run it in any way that uh, I need. So now I already had some lines right. So first of all, we should specify where to run. This is our list of hosts. How many MPI process? So how many? I can run, let's say, four. I have four servers. So if I run four process, I can use all these servers. Uh, I need to specify also how many per server because sometimes uh, the system will put all the process into one uh, server. You should be always careful not, not to do this because I have had uh, situations with people that uh, they just do MPI run and they specify like uh, 100 and something like this, but without uh, having proper access to the list of nodes. And if you do not specify, and uh, if the system itself uh, doesn't recognize where your nodes are and what's happening, it's possible that it will launch 100 processes on the same server. And uh, because the servers are in general powerful, uh, they may be able to even cope with this uh, process. And uh, you're going to uh, see very high load on the server. Uh, maybe sometimes the server will crash because of using too many, uh, too much memory and things like that. So that is why it's always important to uh, properly specify which hosts we have access and how many per host. So to have not too many MPI process per host because they divide the memory. So if you have one uh, host, with 64 gigabyte of RAM. If you launch one MPI per host, then uh, pro MPI process per host, this MPI process will use uh, up to 64 gigabyte. Uh, however, if you launch two process per host, they divide the 64 gigabyte and they use 32 gigabyte each. Uh, okay, they divide if they use in some symmetric way. Uh, so, uh, the best way to use the parallelism that is available is to combine uh, MPI and OpenMP. So the best, uh, I would say, the, the theory and the practice seem to agree that this is the best way to combine MPI uh, between servers and OpenMP uh, for the same server. So here, this server has 16 uh, physical cores. So uh, your best idea would be to use this physical cores through OpenMP and uh, uh, to uh, use multiple servers through MPI. So in this case, four MPI, and then uh, for OpenMP uh, up to 16 or 32 and so on. However, in some cases, uh, this is not exactly the case. I have uh, tested and observed situation where uh, uh, Gromax uh, was uh, best uh, using uh, uh, two process uh, per node and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, if, if you have two MPI, process then maybe 16 open MP or eight open MP threads per uh, process and so on. Uh, so uh, 
this. Uh, so here, the so I'm not specialist in Gromax, uh, but uh, it seems that uh, Gromax controls uh, the number of uh, OpenMP uh, threads uh, with this parameter here, N to N, N T O M P, which uh, I'm setting here to four. And then uh, there are some other options. Uh, this number of steps, I will put 10,000 steps. And these are uh, specific uh, to uh, Gromax things. So this uh, line should be able to start uh, Gromax on these four servers. Let's see if it works. So it says using four MPI process, the first parameter that we have uh, here, NP4, and then uh, four open MP threads. This was from the second parameter uh, here. Uh, this uh, NUMA control uh, is not uh, uh, truly necessary, but uh, doesn't hurt. Uh, one can launch directly here. GMX MPI as executable. Uh, and uh, we can uh, also mm, see uh, what is happening on these uh, 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 servers, but uh, I, will, uh, I will stop this sharing and share from the other console so that you can see exactly what is happening. So I will stop this sharing and uh, uh, share the other uh, console. Uh, moment, please. Uh, maybe you are seeing this one. So I think you are seeing this one. Now I I will need to uh, increase the font here also. Uh, so I'm moving to that note. As I explained, uh, you have the right to log on to nodes that are yours, that are running your jobs. So you can see here some what happening. If you run edge top, so you see four threads are running here. Uh, the memory is uh, not heavily used, so we have free memory. Uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, here everything in green, which means that uh, the process, they are not waiting for something to happen for IO, things like that. So if you see here less than 100%, uh, then uh, you should consider what exactly is happening. Swap uh, is very undesirable. It is expected that uh, the jobs that are run on the supercomputer are not going to use swap. It's just available for some uh, uh, extreme situations. Uh, it is there, but uh, uh, you should uh, try to make sure that the swap uh, is not used almost. Uh, here, some small swap uh, is used for some system reason. Uh, but uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, free memory. So uh, in this way, if I stop uh, this one, so you can do anything you like here. You can go to the directory uh, where your job uh, is running. You can see what is happening. You can uh, see the log, things like that. But you 
you're not required to do that. Uh, if you submit the job through the batch system with these lines inside uh, the job, uh, uh, then the job is simply uh, going to run and uh, you don't have to look at it at uh, all. So uh, here we can again uh, see what is happening uh, with uh, these jobs. Uh, so uh, you can see the status, currently the status of all these jobs is running, but sometimes they are queued uh, when a job is waiting in the queue, there are probably some reason that uh, there aren't enough resources for the job. Uh, sometimes uh, the job uh, enters some bad state uh, and uh, sometimes it needs to be cleaned. Uh, in my experience, uh, what uh, happens sometimes, uh, there are some uh, applications that uh, make use of some system resources uh, that uh, in some cases uh, are not clean up, cleaned up uh, properly. Uh, for example, the semaphore uh, uh, situation, there are applications that use uh, semaphores and uh, uh, if the application crashes, uh, the semaphores uh, still remain as used, but they cannot be used by anybody else. And so uh, even your next job will not start properly. So if you observe something like that, you can try to clean the semaphores yourself, or you can just submit uh, a request for us to clean uh, these semaphores uh, manually. There is, there is a command that cleans them, but uh, it has to be issued uh, on the proper note. So uh, this is uh, just uh, something that uh, sometimes happens. Uh, uh, if uh, some node becomes defective, uh, let's say in this way, it can create problems. Uh, yourself, uh, if you cannot do anything about it and uh, your job uh, uh, enters a node uh, that is in some strange state, then you can just submit uh, um, a request uh, to deal with the situation or you can submit a job uh, that uh, just takes the node without doing anything and then uh, try to obtain different uh, nodes. Like uh, you see here, I obtained these uh, four nodes, and uh, in a previous job, I have uh, these four nodes. Uh, we, in, in our work, uh, what we have done before was uh, to to have like uh, testing jobs that uh, uh, test uh, whether the nodes uh, respond properly. Uh, for example, you can use simple test that uh, does some still uh, MPI uh, communications inside in order to see whether everything works. Here, I have some example program like this uh, Hello MPI C. So I just don't know uh, how good you are uh, in programming and how interested you are in this because uh, you could as well use uh, ready-made applications. As I showed, uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, applications from the domain of uh, computational chemistry installed here. Not all of them are accessible to everybody. There are some that are with license and then they are accessible only to a group uh, of people that have uh, appropriate license for this. Uh, but uh, for the open source uh, applications here, it's no problem to uh, use them and you don't need to be specialist. Uh, nevertheless, even if you are not uh, a specialist in, in the uh, how to compile the application or um, uh, how to develop a software and so on, uh, even if you are only using, still there is a lot uh, that can be done. And uh, uh, you, sh you saw here uh, uh, some options uh, that were used in the command line. Uh, here in this 
uh, in the Gromax uh, uh, launching, you don't see too many of such options. This pin option is uh, uh, option uh, for the application Gromax uh, to pin somehow, uh, I suppose, uh, process to course. But uh, there are lots of options that are available to you when launching MPI job. In the uh, manual, you can see uh, how exactly you can launch. But uh, uh, this uh, uh, Intel uh, script, I think it was, it is a script, or, uh, maybe Python executable, MPI Hydra. It has uh, many options. And uh, these options can be uh, very useful and they can impact uh, not just the correct execution. Uh, currently we have correct execution with four uh, MPI process and four uh, open MP threads. But uh, uh, here I, I have some, uh, online that uh, uh, I don't know it unfortunately is divided uh, into several lines for you but uh, you can see here apart from this uh, uh, option which just specifies uh, uh, just specifies which uh, not to use but uh, there is a option to set uh, the stack size for each of the open MP threads uh, so that uh, in this way, it's not too big. Uh, and uh, also to specify uh, the, what type of uh, affinity uh, will be used. Uh, these are options specific to the uh, Intel compiler in this case, uh, because it, it is the compiler that was used. I think for this executable, it was Intel Fortran compiler combined with uh, Intel uh, uh, MPI library. So this is option for how to uh, deal with these uh, open MP threads uh, inside. And uh, there are many possibilities. This is just one possibility that uh, apparently was good for this executable. Uh, this uh, option, I don't even remember what was the meaning of it, uh, and so on. So this was these options specified with this uh, uh, set the environment variable for all of the MPI process. Uh, this was related to the open MP. Uh, after that, uh, you see certain options related to uh, the Intel MPI library, they are specific for it. And here we specify uh, the best possible way how to use this uh, uh, library and the available fabrics. In this case, we have uh, uh, InfiniBand and we have shared memory bit inside the node. So uh, if I'm launching uh, more than one uh, MPI process per node, which I was doing, uh, when testing uh, Gromax, uh, I can use shared memory for communication between this. And this is better than using, uh, for example, TCP, which will be much slower and uh, uh, with less bandwidth, less latency and so on. And uh, even there, there is in the Intel library, there are options to specify which algorithm to use for which kind of uh, um, of uh, collective communication. So I don't know how uh, knowledgeable you are in using MPI, but uh, MPI uses uh, either uh, a peer to peer exchange of messages or collective communications where some collective communications in some systems are implemented even in hardware. But uh, uh, sometimes the library provides these collective communications uh, as some combination of peer-to-peer uh, -peer communications. And for this, some type of algorithm is used. And uh, uh, Intel, in this case, provides uh, a setting 
to change which exact algorithm to be used for which collective communication. In this case, we change the algorithm for the gather vectors um, collective communication to be algorithm number two, because uh, probably I tried all of them and uh, saw that this one was uh, best in this particular application even. Uh, here again, we have uh, OMP mem threads uh, uh, to be uh, set to one in this case, uh, but this is very specific uh, for the type of application that uh, you are seeing here. Uh, it was using mainly uh, MPI multiple processes per uh, one server, uh, but this, this is uh, just for this application. Usually, uh, OMP num threads should be 16 or 32, uh, rarely less than 16. Uh, and uh, there are many other options for the Intel MPI library, uh, which uh, there are some very useful documents where it is described uh, what you can try and uh, you can freely try this. Uh, it's uh, totally useful. Uh, I will share here one document uh, which is uh, available at the uh, CSC, which is a partner in price, I think also. Uh, and uh, there are many other such uh, uh, documents which describe uh, how exactly uh, you can tune an MPI application. So here, uh, it's actually, it's Intel document, which is available in this uh, uh, site of uh, our partner. Uh, here you can see what kind of options you can use. And uh, I showed you that uh, I had tuned uh, the gather vector, but how did I know that it is important even to tune this one? So through the using of this uh, benchmark profiling with uh, this option, I MPI stats, it was enabled. I saw that uh, this uh, uh, type of collective communications were used a lot. And so I tried to change the algorithm to see what happens. And uh, here you see many other uh, options uh, that uh, can be used. Uh, it's uh, sometimes uh, if uh, the uh, program is crashing, you can enable debugging with this Intel MPI debug with higher level so that you can see why it's not progressing. Uh, there were many situations uh, where we had to specify something in order to avoid uh, uh, failure of uh, some applications when using lots of uh, processes, lots of threads. For example, there was uh, some uh, scalable progress uh, option. Uh, this double was perhaps the best uh, uh, option in, even in our system. And uh, uh, you can see here, here, this one was important whether it's enabled or disabled enable I think was uh, uh, the good uh, choice uh, but not always these are required uh, and uh, not always they are useful but they are possible here if you are interested uh, you can check uh, probably this is not going to crash uh, the system uh, setting uh, these options so you can experiment you can see what happens what uh, works what doesn't work for example, this uh, spin count, uh, it means uh, how many times uh, the, uh, when waiting for message, uh, the, the process will uh, just whoop and check again and check again, thus uh, uh, making use of CPU. Sometimes this is not good. Uh, uh, you can make it uh, to uh, just uh, uh, check only once and then switch to the different way to wait uh, for message, uh, which will not uh, use the CPU, but then the latency is increased, uh, but the use of CPU is decreased. This may be useful if you use hyper-threading. If you are not using hyper-threading, 
probably it's not worth uh, playing with. So there are many options. Uh, they are not uh, that important. They don't always improve things, but uh, uh, you can hope to get maybe 20% improvement through playing with these uh, options. Or you can just ask uh, uh, what is suggested uh, for you or what is known to work for some particular uh, applications. I will stop uh, sharing uh, this one. Uh, and uh, uh, switch uh, back to the other screen. Uh, 